If the charging is complete, please close the rear derailleur cover. The installation of the DI2 system on the road bike frame is now complete. Now you need to pair these devices. First, turn on Bluetooth on your smartphone. Then download and install the Shimano eTube app. When you run the eTube app, press and hold the rear derailleur function button for about one to two seconds to enter pairing mode. The blue indicator light will start flashing. Along with the resistor bike or power meter, there is a plus button. Press it. Now search for the device to be paired, and once it appears, click register. At this point, you can set a pass key. You can either set your desired password or press later to set it later. Once registered, the battery and derailleurs will be displayed. Now press the next button. The page will move to add switch mode. Enter add switch and register the Shimano dual lever. Next, you need to either manually enter the device number inside the dual lever or scan the QR code. I will scan the QR code. Both the left lever and the right lever must be registered. Now press the complete button. Enter the name of your road bike and take a photo. When you click register as new bike, it will ask whether you want to save the passkey on the Shimano server. For now, I will not save it. If you are concerned about theft, it is better to register. Once registration is complete, you will enter the customize menu. Now press the shifter button under switch. It will then prompt you to press any button on the left dual lever. At this point, press and hold the left lever button for about one second. Register the right dual lever in the same way. Once registration is complete, you can configure the button functions. In the case of 105, each lever can use two buttons. Recently, Shimano has enabled both shift up and shift down to be operated from the same buttons. After setting this, the remaining buttons can be used for cycling computers like Garmin, such as changing display screens. Depending on the product, it is also possible to turn your bike lights on and off wirelessly. Although it may seem unnecessary, a fine adjustment may sometimes be required to move the front derailleur slightly outward from the large chain ring. Honestly, I don't strongly recommend using the buttons for functions other than shifting. However, while using them this way, I have never experienced shifting problems or chain drop issues. On Altegra and Dura-Ace models, there are hidden buttons on top of the dual levers. These can be set as shifting buttons or configured as the rear derailleur function button. Alternatively, they can be used as control buttons for cycling computers, as I mentioned earlier. If you've installed satellite shifters, you can press the Add Satellite Shifter button to register them as well. There are two types, a long cable version installed under the top of the drop bar and a sprint shifter type mounted underneath the drop bar. I'll upload a separate video on how to install them. Once all settings are complete, press the Apply button at the bottom Switch registration is now finished. Back on the Customize page, go to the Shift menu and click on the front derailleur image. First, select the crank chain ring installed on your bike. Next, choose the cassette installed on your bike. If the exact spec isn't available, just select any option. It won't cause any issues. Now, press the OK button. Or, you can press the three-dot menu button to change the settings later. Now you can configure semi-synchronized shift and synchronized shift. By default, S1 is set to semi-synchronized shift mode. In this mode, when you shift with the front derailleur, the rear derailleur automatically adjusts. It shows front up to rear down two gears. When the front chain ring shifts to the big ring, that's called a shift up. The rear derailleur automatically shifts down two gears to a larger cog. This way, when your speed increases, pedaling doesn't suddenly get heavier. Instead, you can keep spinning the crank smoothly at the right gear ratio without shock. Normally, shifting only the front gear creates a big jolt, but this system automatically prevents that. Now, tap the S1 image. You can set the system to automatically adjust up to three gears when shifting the front, but the default two gear setting works best. Next, press the three dot menu in the top right corner. Here, you can adjust the shifting speed for semi-synchronized mode. If you ride with a slower, more power-focused cadence, it's better to choose slow. Once you've set up semi-synchronized shift mode, press apply to save. The S2 slot is set to synchronized shift mode. 
To explain simply, if you shift only the rear derailleur, the front derailleur will shift automatically. This feature is useful when riding solo on flat terrain. Now press the synchronized shift button. You will see a table like this. The numbers at the top indicate the front chainring, 52T for the big chainring, and 36T for the small chainring. The numbers on the left indicate the rear sprockets, ranging from 11 to 30T. The specs you entered initially can be checked in this table. You can adjust the shifting points as you like. For example, if the crank is on the small chainring 36T and the rear sprocket is 16T and you want to shift up to the next stage, the crank chainring will change to the big 50T. At the same time, the rear sprocket will automatically shift to 19T, moving the chain to the larger gear. The gear ratio is also shown in parentheses. As your speed increases, the gear ratio changes from 2.25 to 2.74. The blue section on the right works in the opposite direction. When climbing a hill and shifting down to a smaller gear, the crank chain ring changes to 36T, and the rear sprocket automatically shifts to 21T. The gear changes automatically to the next step. If you click the animation button in the top right, you can see a simulation of how it works. Shifting up from 16T activates synchronized mode. Shifting down from 27T also activates synchronized mode. With this setup, the chain usually runs through the middle sprocket. This is to ensure the chain stays as straight as possible, operates smoothly, and maximizes energy efficiency. Chain noise is minimal. Some people call this position the sweet spot. Next, click the three-dot icon in the top right corner. Here, you can adjust the synchronized shift interval. It is recommended to set it to normal. Finally, press the Apply button to save your settings. Now press the rear derailleur shift unit button. First, let me explain the multi-shift function. This feature allows the gears to shift continuously when you hold down the shift button on the dual lever. First, there is a button to turn the multi-shift function on or off. Second, the gear shifting interval function sets the speed of multi-shift. For stable shifting, it is recommended to leave it on normal. If you ride with a focus on crank rotation speed, you can set it to fast mode. Now the third line is the gear no limit setting. This lets you set the number of consecutive gear shifts or use it with no limit. Personally, I found setting it to unlimited the most intuitive and convenient. Now, press the apply button to complete the setup. If you press the update button at the top left, a list of devices available for update will appear. If there are devices that can be updated, it's recommended to update them. On your smartphone, press the maintenance button at the top right. First, you can check the battery level of the dual lever. Next, by pressing the gear use rate button, you can see the gear ratios you have used while riding. Next is the adjustment. First, Press the front shifting unit button. If a warning appears to be careful of hand injuries, press OK. And then press the start button. This is step one. At the beginning, the chain should be on the big front chain ring and the smallest rear sprocket, as shown in the illustration. Then press start. Now step two, adjust the gap between the front derailleur outer plate and the chain using the left and right buttons setting it between 0.5 and 1 millimeter as shown. Once the position is adjusted, press the next button. Now, step three. As shown, the chain is set to move to the largest front and largest rear gear positions. Press the start button. A prompt will appear to rotate the crank arm. Rotate the crank arm. When the gear shift is complete, press start again. Now step four, adjust the gap between the front derailleur inner plate and the chain to zero to 0 0.5 millimeters as shown. Once adjusted,
press the next button. Now, step five. As shown, the chain is set to move to the smallest front and largest rear gear positions. Press start and a prompt will appear to rotate the crank arm. Rotate the crank arm. Now, the final step six. Once the gear shift is complete, adjust the gap between the front derailleur inner plate and the chain to zero to 0 0.5 millimeters as shown. When the position is set, press the complete button to finish the front derailleur adjustment. Finally, press the complete button. Next, press the rear shift unit button in adjustment. If a warning appears to be careful of hand injuries, press OK. You can now see the current rear derailleur position. Press the left and right buttons at the top to shift the rear derailleur. Now comes the most important part. Use the adjust at the bottom to align the chain with the rear derailleur. While shifting gears, press the buttons to optimize the rear derailleur position. It is recommended to adjust every gear position. However, adjusting only the largest, smallest, and middle gear positions is sufficient. While rotating the pedals and shifting gears, check that each gear shifts smoothly and adjust so that shifting works well in every direction. When the rear derailleur is aligned, press the complete button to finish. Finally, press the disconnect button to complete the DI2 setup using the E2 app. 